Hey everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So yesterday I was working at my friend Jessica's house. She has a gorgeous, newly renovated, mid-century mid -century modern home here in Davis that includes an atrium with indoor gardens. And so we were working on renovating that. I did part one yesterday. Part two was supposed to come out today, but we actually had some scheduling difficulties. So part two, which is where I'll finish up the irrigation and then like do the finishing touches including the ground cover that should come out sometime next week so I apologize for not having part one and part two right next to each other but it's just like you know like kids soccer games and tumbling and all that kind of stuff so we are going to film over the weekend just just to make that easy I will link that first video down below it is really really cool you guys it is a very neat garden project I've never worked on an indoor garden before I'm so excited to see it uh like fill in i mean it's going to be absolutely beautiful i did have a lot of you comment on that video asking why or the, recommending to use coleus in there i totally agree with you i think coleus would have been absolutely beautiful and i was showing her all the different colors of coleus that she could put in there but she's really drawn to the waxy leaves like the star jasmine like the monstera like the rubber plant she really likes the look of plants that have waxy leaves and coleus doesn't have waxy leaves so that's what she wanted it's her garden but i totally agree with you guys about the coleus uh but it's not my garden you know so yeah so i'll link that video down below so today i'm kind of changing changing the tune a little bit and we're going to talk about something else what i wanted to talk about today i've been waiting to talk to you guys about this is tree dahlias i don't know if you guys have heard of tree dahlias I had never heard of tree dahlias until Robbie from Visit Our Garden, my good friend Robbie, he introduced me to them earlier this year when I went to do a garden tour of his garden. He is growing a tree dahlia in his garden. I will link his video down below so you guys can see that tour. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was March when we did that tour, so his garden was not fully grown in. Uh, we are planning to do a follow-up garden tour, so stay tuned for that. Um, but my sweet friend Robbie, he ended up getting me some tree dahlias, right? So I could plant them in my garden myself. Oh, I'm so excited to get these planted because I'm pretty much obsessed learning about with <laughs> learning about tree dahlias now at this point. Uh, and I wanted to share this information with you guys simply because I don't think a lot of people know about tree dahlias and I think they are the coolest plant. They are the coolest, coolest thing. So I know it's a little bit late to be getting dahlias in the ground, but technically you have until about mid-June um, and it's still mid-May. So I'm, I'm fine. They're still going to bloom and tree dahlias from everything that I've read don't really start blooming until late summer, like a, kind of around November is the peak time uh, that they bloom. I am standing over here for the shade, but the honeysuckle smells incredible right now. It smells so good. So Anyway, back to the tree dahlias. So tree dahlias are incredibly similar uh, to common garden dahlias, right? The garden, the dahlias that we all talk about and a lot of us grow in our gardens. They are both from the mountains of Mexico and Guatemala, kind of in that area. And then I actually found this really, really interesting article on tree dahlias. I will link it down below. But what I learned in that article is um, they've been around forever. So basically the Aztecs, they have a name for tree dahlia specifically. It, the, the name is a cocotil. Don't know if I'm saying that right, but it means water cane. And so we all know dahlias have hollow stems, like the regular dahlias that we grow have hollow stems. Well, the tree dahlias that can get up to 20 feet tall also have hollow stems. So think about, think about that, like a 20 foot long hollow pipe, right? It's literally a pipe. So the Aztecs used it to transport water, which I think is just the coolest thing. I think it is so neat. So anyway, it started in that area with the Aztecs, Mexico, Guatemala. It made its way over to Europe in about 1860s, 1863. I have my notes right here. That's why I keep looking down. Um, the first tree dahlia grown in Europe was grown in the Zurich Botanical Gardens in 1863. So then fast forward a 
hundred years later, the tree dahlia eventually made it made its way across the ocean into the San Francisco Botanical Gardens. And they still grow them there today. And around the 1970s, there was a plantsman named Roderick, Wayne Roderick, and he started breeding these tree dahlias, creating different varieties. Because originally, the main variety was the one that Robbie actually got me. It was called Dahlia Imperialis. And it's this gorgeous, like lavender, like flowy leaves, it, it, excuse me, flowy petal. It didn't, doesn't totally look like the regular dahlias that we have in our garden. Apparently the regular common garden dahlias have been bred to within an inch of their life, right? For like uh, double petals and pom-pom shapes and, you know, and all that kind of stuff, different colors. Um, and they've all been bred in Europe. And the tree dahlia, just not being as popular, didn't get bred as much until in the 1970s in the San Francisco Botanical Gardens. And Wayne Broderick actually uh, bred this Dahlia Imperialis and he bred it into 10 different varieties. And all 10 of those varieties are still present in the San Francisco Botanical Gardens. So what does that mean? Field trip. <laughs> I am going to be taking a field trip in, they said November is the best time to go to see the dahlias in bloom, the tree dahlias in bloom. So you better believe I will be there. We're about an hour and a half away from San Francisco, I would say. So it's easily a day trip for me. No big deal. So anyway, I just reading about this, I've just, I've become obsessed, of course. So Roderick's different varieties, um, the Dahlia Imperialis, it's a pale lavender, but Roderick's different varieties, I couldn't really find pictures. I'll see if I can find pictures after filming this, but I could really only find pictures of the Imperialis. Roderick has developed like single whites, single pinks, single lavender flowers, um, a double white with a pom-pom center, like a whole bunch of different colors for the street tree Dahlia which is really cool and I'm ex I'm excited to see it. So a couple tips for growing tree dahlias very similar to the common garden dahlia. You want to plant them in um, soil that has a lot of organic compost in it. You want to plant them, you know, so that they're about two inches below, below the soil surface, eyes pointing forward, mainly full sun. They can handle I, what I read. They can handle a little bit of shade, but they obviously won't bloom as well um, with less sun. So uh, the difference between tree dahlias and regular dahlias is, of course, just the height. It's the height difference. And we know that regular dahlias are brittle. <laughs> they have those hollow stems. And if there's a big windstorm, it's going to knock them over and it's going to snap at the bottom and you're going to lose that whole stock of dahlias. Same thing with a tree dahlia, which is probably why it's not as popular because you're at risk of it snapping over. So they recommend to plant your tree dahlias in, in an incredibly protected place from the wind and even stake it up just to be extra safe. So you guys see my veggie garden right behind me. This post of the pergola right there. I'm going to plant the tree dahlia right next to that post so I can lash it to that post. It is probably the most protected spot that I have in my garden. It's definitely the most protected spot that I have in my garden from frost. So I am going to leave this tree dahlia in the ground. I think that that's a perfect place for it. Hopefully it'll come back even bigger and more blooms next year. But that's the biggest tip that I learned uh, about tree dahlias is you just, you need to protect it. Oh, the other thing that I learned about dahlias when I was researching. I'll link this article down below. Did you know you can eat dahlia tubers? Mexicans, like Aztecs, they used to eat, or they still do, I guess. They still do eat dahlia tubers. And I guess you can boil them just like a potato, peel the outside and literally, literally eat them like a potato or a sweet potato or something like that. So they said that they have kind of like a celery, a mix between celery, artichoke and jicama is what the taste is. I will not be eating my Dahlia tubers, but it was just interesting to hear that you could eat them.
All right, I am all done. That actually only took me barely any time at all. And I actually went inside, took a little break and had some lunch and rested a little bit. So that's why you guys see the shadow right here. Um, so I planted one of the tree dahlias right here and another one right there. And so they're gonna grow up and I might put a stake next to them or if they kind of get really big, I might lash them to this thing. I don't know, I just have to kind of see where they're at. You can see I do have my purple hyacinth bean right here that I grew from seed. I have another one over over there right next to that post. I am gonna leave it in, I've decided. I think I'm gonna leave it in because this will start growing like crazy very quickly and it will give me some color and some foliage earlier in the season than I think the tree dahlias are going to give me um, foliage and color. From what I read, they said that the tree dahlias really start, don't start growing really quickly until like end of August, September. So um, once they do start growing really big, then I'm, I'm more than happy to cut this back, but I figure I might as well just leave it in for now. Uh, if you guys are wondering about this, this is an old, I think you call it a grounding rod. Um, uh, an old one for our house and it's just so deep into the ground that Jason and I cannot remove it. So it there it stays and I plant around it. One day we'll get around <laughs> to actually removing it, but that's what that is if you guys are wondering about that. Then I planted the tree dahlias about, I, I dug a hole about six inches, put the tree dahlia in so the top of it was about two inches under the ground and then totally filled it up with compost. There is so much compost and organic matter in this bed, I feel like that they're going to be very, very happy here. So a couple other things I forgot to tell you guys before I started planting about tree dahlias. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't water them like you, you know, like you would for a common garden dahlia. You want to plant it, water it in like I did, and then not water it again until you start seeing, uh, you know, the little shoots come up just so that you don't rot the tubers. So I think that that's really important. I I watered mine in and I will not water again in that spot until I start seeing something. So yeah, so, oh, the other thing, I keep forgetting, one more thing, one more thing. Apparently it's incredibly easy to propagate tree dahlias. Apparently you can just take the stalk, cut it into like a 12 inch to 18 inch sections, making sure that there's like one or two leaf nodes on each section, in each in each section, <laughs> I have like a food coma from my lunch. Um, but then you put the whole thing into a pot of potting soil, keep it moist and put it in the shade and you can propagate. Apparently it's incredibly easy. And then of course, if you want to dig the tubers up, you can divide the tubers just like you would for normal dahlias. And then of course seeds. I am not planning on digging these tubers up. So if I do decide to propagate them, I'm gonna go with that, that cutting technique because I think that that sounds really interesting. So yeah, so that's it for tree dahlias. It's kind of become my new obsession thanks to Robbie um, <laughs> introducing me to this new plant. But I, I just love learning about new plants and I love learning about like new things that I can put in my garden that I actually haven't seen. Um, yeah, I've never seen a tree dahlia. I've never seen a tree dahlia with my own eyes. So I'm on a mission to see a tree dahlia. I will go to the San Francisco Botanical Gardens at some point this year. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure I will will make it there. And then hopefully these guys grow up and see how they do. You are supposed to plant tree dahlias two feet apart. Um, so I feel like I planted them a little close, but you know, we will see how it is. Um, oh, I just realized my canna. Look at that. That just opened today. Isn't that pretty? This is toucan coral canna. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay distracting. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.